Okay, say you've designed your circuit uh, all on the breadboard, everything's working fine, and you want a more permanent solution to mount on your project uh, as a standalone. Well, what options do you have? First, you can make your own board on a uh, perf board, or strip board as it's called, and you'd end up with something looking kind of like this. Now, this is fine for uh, smaller projects where you don't really need it to be that accurate, or for little DIY home um, home things that you don't really care about the looks that much. As you can see, the back is quite messy, but it works, and it's a very kind of ghetto solution to doing things. But if you want something more professional, uh, how do you go about designing uh, a proper PCB, like uh, like you see the Arduino boards? That's a really nicely designed, um, finished product that you can actually sell or use in um, use in competitions or something that you kind of want to show off. How would you go about designing one of these? Well, I made a tutorial for you, so here you go. One of the first tips I would give to making a, or designing a PCB is use up this, all the available area. Don't waste any space. So um, all these boards you can see, the green one I, I actually designed myself, um, they all use up the space pretty well. Uh, this giant rectangle is actually for an LCD, so it will be covered up. But there are components and uh, traces going through almost everything. Um, however, don't make it really hard to solder. Uh, if you have loads of uh, little SMD LEDs, for example, uh, in a matrix uh, close to each other, uh, you're likely going to have to solder it by hand, which is going to be a real pain if you uh, really densely populate the board. Um, there are other options like uh, using a professional pick-and-place machine that actually machine solders it on, but that's uh, really expensive and, and ideally only suitable for um, manufacturing runs of, say, a hundred or more boards where you actually want to sell something. Another tip I would give when designing a PCB is to avoid a regular through-hole components and use surface mount technology. This can be uh, quite useful because um, a lot of components only come in surface mount forms like, um, like this little FT232RL USB to UART converter chip that does not come in a through-hole version. So in order to use that you have to design the PCB or use one of those um, I forgot what they call. I think they call smart boards or something that has um, that's an uh, adapter for SMT components. And also, um, surface mount technology does look a lot nicer. For example, this uh, LED on the board probably didn't even notice it before, but you can see the tiny little um, LED lights up, and that really looks uh, nice and professional. The next thing uh, to think about when designing your own board is uh, component prices and uh, component selection. This can be uh, one of the most time-consuming and uh, difficult parts of the process actually, even though you might not think so. Uh, so let's go on to the computer and uh, have a look at what components are available and compare prices and see how you would go about doing that. Choosing the right place to buy your component is just as important as choosing the right place to manufacture your board. For example, if you look at um, RS, which is one uh, pretty big company for electronics, and say you want to buy the same F3, FD232RL USB converter chip that I showed you earlier. Well, if you search it up here, you can see that it's quite expensive. It's $9, 9 Singapore dollars, which is about 7 USD. And this is actually quite ridiculous. If you want to make uh, 10 boards, that's $70 just going into that one little chip. So then, uh, Right, we can compare a different place, say Element 14, uh, used to be called Farnell. Same board, F3, FD232RL. Go on to Drivers and Interfaces. And you can see it's a little bit cheaper, 7 or so Singapore dollars, it's like 5 US dollars. So on the scale of like 10 boards, it saves you 20 bucks, which is quite a lot, um, but still not as much as uh, you'd like to save, actually. Then you can go to DigiKey and look at that. And you can see that um, yeah, in packs of like 2,000, a, a reel of 2,000, you'd pay 265 for each, but that's really not uh, not going to be useful. You, you, what are you going to do with 2,000 of those chips? Um, you can get quantities of one for 450, which is a, a little bit better, but still not that great. 
So uh, for a lot of these expensive um, ICs, uh, relatively expensive, you could go to eBay, which is one of the cheapest places you can find these things. Um, so you search up F3232 RL. Uh, you have to look around for it. You can see 10 of them would cost you $25 with free shipping. That's $250 a chip, same as the 2000 uh, quantity uh, from DigiKey, but you can get it in smaller quantities of 10 and free shipping. So that's uh, that's really a, a one of the best options you can choose for, um, for these. You have to wait a few weeks, but it can be worth it. Similarly, like your uh, your HD 44780 LCD would cost you two dollars off eBay, whereas if you bought it, um, say let's look for a 16 by 2 LCD on RS, that would cost you let's uh, sort by price ascending, and yeah, the cheapest one you can get without a backlight would be eight dollars ten cents. Which is four times more expensive for Singapore dollars, so like three times more expensive than um, the more of these, which actually has a backlight and is blue as well, which would be twenty dollars, say, on RS, I guess. Yeah, if you look at the blue one, oh, twelve dollars, not much better. So where you get your components is uh, extremely important and uh, definitely a huge factor in uh, in designing your PCB. Of course, once you've designed your PCB, you always want to check it before you actually send it off to the board house. So what I what I do is um, I print out a document with all the connections that need to be made, and uh, individually check them out on um, on a printout of the board like this, both top and bottom, and um, cross them out once I know something's a uh, connection's been made. And at this point, I, I was pretty sure I wouldn't find any mistakes, but of course. Something wasn't connected over here, so that did save uh, save quite a bit of trouble um, when actually building the board up, because you don't want to send it off uh, with any errors as much as possible. Of course, your first revision is always going to have some problems no matter what you what you do, but you can minimize that by checking it beforehand. Before you actually give your board to be manufactured, make sure you print a one-to-one -one scale printout and check that your components actually fit. Of course, I did this beforehand, and you can see that it fits just perfectly to the board. Another important thing in designing boards is the silk screen layer or the white printout you see on top. That is basically just uh, any text or outlines of components that you want to put on top of the board. It can be really useful because um, you can know what IC does what and also you can identify which revision of the board it is and what the board actually does because chances are in, in a couple of years when you dig this out you probably don't, don't know what it does. And a um, couple of things to think about when adding silkscreen is um, add it for any LEDs. You want to know what the LED means when it's lit. Add it for any connectors. Um, so you want to know what the connector is supposed to plug into. But don't add it for every single capacitor value and resistor value because you can just look at a schematic when soldering that in. You don't really need to know that that pull up resistor is 10 kilo ohms. But add it for things like LEDs, buttons, uh, connectors, those kind of things where you actually need to know what it does. And um, yeah, if you want, um, add like a logo or something cool, because that always looks nice uh, when you do it. Some board houses require you to put your order number on the board, and some of them actually um, plaster their own little codes at the bottom. That can be annoying, but they usually put it out of out of way. So um, that is one pretty important thing to think about when designing your PCB. You also want to consider the final shape of the board because um, you can. A lot of uh, board manufacturers can accommodate uh, custom shapes. As you can see, I rounded the corners in mine because regular rectangular boards ah they're sharp. So you can round the corners, which um, which can be quite aesthetically pleasing and serves a purpose. You don't cut yourself on them. And if you have uh, other requirements, um, like you have a specific project case, you can uh, make a funny shape as long as it's not too ridiculous to go around it. Of course, the Arduino board, I don't know why it has that shape. I think it's just kind of their standard footprint. But um, it's always nice to customize your shape a little bit. Don't just stick to a plain rectangle unless you have a reason for doing that, like um, the board manufacturer you choose charges more for it. But that's uh, usually unlikely. Simple boards, um, simple shapes like this, you can 
get them cut out for free. When you're laying out your board, make sure you put um, holes so you can actually mount the board onto your project. Um, yeah, if, you, if you've already designed your project, make sure you design your board around that. Otherwise, just put some generic uh, holes like in this uh, USB, uh, uh, USB programmer, which just has four holes in the corners. Or um, the Arduino, which has, uh, again, four holes. Kind of a funny shape, but you can easily design your project around that. So you always need to make sure that you have a way to mount your board on your final project. The final thing to look at before I actually show you some different board manufacturers is solder mask. If you don't know what that means, it's basically a layer uh, of some sort of substance that uh, gives you the color on top of the board. Uh, it's actually used to prevent uh, solder jumping from one pad to another, especially for SMD components like this. But um, most, uh, most manufacturers give you a green solder mask standard for free on both sides. That will look like this, just your average PCB. If you pay a little bit extra, you can get uh, other colors like blue, white, and um, of course red. And I believe you can get black as well. And um, yeah, custom colors uh, uh, like pink and stuff would really be unlikely unless you're willing to mix the dyes yourself or find a way to do that, which is going to be really expensive. But for kind of average colors um, like blue and red, you usually have to pay a small charge of say twenty dollars or so extra but average green is usually free there are quite a few different uh, places where you can get your board manufactured one of the most uh, common and popular ones is called gold phoenix uh, pcb their quick quote uh, online quote feature doesn't actually work uh, properly but uh, if you log in, you can get uh, a proper code sheet, and that charges, say, about $130 with custom solder mask color, like blue or red, or $110 uh, for 10 boards with just your standard green. Another place is called Silver Circuits or CustomPCB.com, and uh, they have a couple of different uh, kind of uh, types of orders. You can have your um, regular production order, so if you look at that. So let's say um, double layer, 5 by 4, all works. Okay, final surface, uh, HASL is hot air solder leveling. That's the most common one. You can get lead free as well, which is that. And NAG is, uh, I don't know what it stands for, but it's basically a gold finish that's plated. And um, it's a gold plated kind of finish. I think it uses nickel or something. But it's um, supposed to be more uh, durable. I don't know how, how much it actually works by. But um, you can have your own custom lead time, say two weeks. And top silk screen, white solder mask, uh, green, rectangular, um, internal, or let's say custom shape. Uh, no internal cutouts. And uh, we don't need a test. And let's see how much it costs. It's 130 bucks for how many boards? Five boards, which is 100 square inches. That's pretty expensive, actually. Or let's look at um, the board I've actually made, which is in millimeters. It's uh, I believe it was a hundred by eighty, and that gives nine boards for the same one hundred and thirty-four, a little bit more. And um, if you wanted, um, say, a custom solder mask, let's say I want a red solder mask, that's whoa, the cost has gone up a lot. That's because setup cost used to be. Let's see how much actually changed by. Setup cost is. Um, Oh, that's right. 75 so an extra $30 for a custom solder mask. That's pretty much uh, crazy, actually. Because uh, you wouldn't want to pay $30 just for uh, your own color. Another common one is a PCB cart, which um, I don't know about it much. Um, Dave Jones from EEV, EEV Blog uh, uses that, uh, I think, for his microcurrents, but I don't know how good they are. Then there's, um, for the hobbyist, there's this thing called OSH Park, where um, they kind of panelize designs, so a bunch of people send, send designs to them, and they all um, get put in one big panel and then cut out and shipped individually later. That, um, you cannot get uh, custom colors. It comes in this weird purple color. Uh, looks like they have some sort of online uh, phone order checker real time or something. That looks pretty cool. Um, the reviews are pretty good. Let's look at the price, pricing, and specs. 
five dollars per square inch for three copies. So two square inch board cost you ten dollars and get three copies. That's not bad. That's pretty cheap actually. So if you want say nine copies, you pay thirty bucks for a two square inch board or a three square inch board would cost you um, fifteen dollars for three copies. And you can get four layer boards as well, ten dollars per square inch. But um, you for the hobbyist, you're not going to use more than two layers basically. And you can get slight uh, bigger runs, so a dollar per square inches and 150 square inches minimum. So you have to pay at least 150 bucks. And you have as many different designs as long as each is ordered in multiples of ten. And you cannot order those directly through the site. You have to send designs to somebody. And um, these have pretty good reviews because they have, um, if you look at the specs, specifications, they have um, uh, the Enig finish, which uh, is usually one of the best. Uh, I told you about it. It's um, supposed to have better solderability as well. And this is just standard specs: 1.6 millimeter thick with one ounce copper. And um, internal cutouts are allowed. And oh, plated slots are not supported. So if you look. Um, uh, if you look at uh, your DC power jack, for example, you cannot have um, slots for it because you can see that it has um, kind of uh, rectangular um, profile pins, and you cannot have slots like uh, this person has because they're not going to be plated. They're not. That means uh, the top and bottom uh, pads for that are not going to be internally connected. So you have to just use giant holes for them like this, which is what I do normally, but um, just as something to think about. The final option, which is what I use, is called um, is the Seed Studio PCB service. And you might think um, they don't have a PCB service, it just looks like an online shop. You search for Fusion PCB. You can see you get coupons as well. You can see they have a PCB service. And let's look into that actually. Okay, so the, the starting cost is uh, ten dollars, and let's say ten a quantity of ten looks about right. Uh, we're not going to need more than that. Two layers, of course. We don't need a one layer board. Um, one point six. That's all. Uh, let's say ten by ten centimeters max. That's an additional fifteen dollars because that's we want a big board. And um, hot air sold leveling, leveling. That's fine. And they do uh, a free fifty percent uh, test of the board. So that means if you order ten boards, they test five of them for free. Uh, if you pay an extra ten dollars, they'll test all of them. And um, this is what's nice about them. Their uh, solder mask costs are not much. It's only ten dollars for a custom color. Uh, Twenty if you want black. But yeah. And their N egg finish is fifteen dollars. You can see that's actually pretty expensive. Um, N egg yeah, is. Quite, um, quite premium actually, and then you have your lead-free uh, soldering, hot air solder leveling, and um, yeah. So total cost for this, let's see what it would look like. Add it to cart. That would be twenty-four bucks, and then shipping's about six dollars for the standard. If you want like fast DHL, next day shipping is like twenty bucks, but thirty bucks for ten boards. That is the best price by far so far, and that's what I've used, and the quality is pretty good. So uh, there you have it, that's um, the kind of steps you need to go through to design your own printed circuit board.